As we've been talking about, Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull meets President Trump at the White House on Friday with trade and the Trans-Pacific Partnership high on the agenda. QIC Chief Damien Frawley is part of this Australian delegation, 22 persons strong, joining us now from Washington. He has more than 30 years experience in financial services and is a former head of BlackRock Australia. Uh, first, Damien, tell me how the trip is going so far. Uh, yeah, Betty, arrived uh, on Tuesday in New York, uh, came down to Washington today. Um, our Premier, uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk uh, of Queensland in, in Australia, she accompanied me yesterday in New York. Uh, mm -hmm. We met with my old firm, BlackRock, um, and then I came down today uh, and attended a lunch today with Lucy Turnbull, um, who is the uh, Prime Minister's wife. Great. Well, it certainly sounds like it, it, it's a it's a big uh, it, big high level welcome uh, that is being rolled out for a four year delegation. What what do you want to achieve out of this? What to you will be success out of this trip? Um, look, I think obviously there's a lot of talk uh, in the U.S. around infrastructure, and there has been for some time. Um, you know, as Australians and as an Australian uh, head of an infrastructure business and a real estate business, mm -hmm. uh, we're very interested to understand um, uh, where the debate is uh, sort of going in terms of infrastructure and the build out of infrastructure in the U.S. There's no shortage of capital uh, from around the world and particularly in Australia. We've been uh, investors in infrastructure, not just domestically, but globally for many years. Um, and the U.S. obviously is a very, very prospective market. Um, so uh, there's a lot of work to do, I'm sure, here in the U.S. Uh, with the policymakers to ensure that the framework that's set up uh, to uh, deliver that infrastructure uh, to the population, but also present that opportunity for investors such as ourselves uh, to be able to participate in, in, in uh, investing in, in those assets. Right. Damien, what can the U.S. learn from Australia when it comes to this asset recycling program? I mean, this was already a pretty controversial policy at home. There's this kind of perception that you're actually privatizing old infrastructure assets in order to pay for new ones. Are you concerned that you could face the same type of opposition in the U.S.? Um, well, look, I think it's worked very well in parts of Australia. Um, and I think the narrative uh, that underpinned that um, that, that, that strategy uh, worked very well, whereby, uh, you know, some of the infrastructure that was being either privatised, if it was in government ownership, uh, was being sold to create uh, new uh, infrastructure and much needed infrastructure uh, for, um, again, the, the, the population in, in the cities of Sydney and, and in Melbourne. Uh, in Brisbane, uh, we as a government um, have not um, and we didn't participate in the in the recycling uh, process. Uh, however, uh, there is great greenfield opportunities in, in places like Queensland uh, to participate in investing in infrastructure. But whilst it was um, controversial, I think the narrative that underpinned it uh, actually saw that the population really engaged with it in the end. And you've only got to look at New South Wales and in particular Sydney where there's an yeah. enormous amount of infrastructure being built out there now. Uh, and infrastructure that, frankly, as I said before, uh, is much needed uh, and overdue. Um, so... Sure. Uh, how can the U.S. federal government then maybe further incentivize some of these states and, and perhaps change that kind of mentality uh, either by either selling assets and, and recycled capital? I mean, do you think that there is a pitch here that, that they're still missing? Um, well, interestingly here, you know, a lot of the infrastructure uh, is held by uh, the munis or, um, or uh, you know, state governments. Um, and that is the real challenge, I think, for the federal government, um, is to ensure that uh, there is a framework that delivers the infrastructure that's required uh, in the states and in the, in the, um, in the local councils. Uh, um, and, it, it, you know, I think it's not going to happen, uh, I don't believe, um, by the federal government um, effectively uh, working in isolation. I think that it's critical that uh, all layers of government work towards an outcome that delivers the needed infrastructure. 
but also then creates that opportunity for investment. Many of these assets too are regulated. Ultimately, the government is the regulator. Right. Um, and I think that's the other important point in, in, in Australia. And that really, I believe, uh, supported the, um, uh, you know, the notion that this asset recycling uh, was a very, very good idea. Um, it incentivises state governments, it incentivises uh, local yeah. governments um, to, uh, you know, to, to, to get on with it. And, and, but it needs to be a tripartite um, uh, conversation. It needs to be a tripartite policy. Right. But, but, but it, is a, uh, it is a challenge, though, Damien. I mean, these local governments, state municipal governments, uh, you would think it would make sense, but, you know, there have been lots of debacles on trying to invest in infrastructure on that local level. So have you had pushback? Have you, you know, during this trip so far, uh, you know, have you had some pushback on that level? Um, well, uh, we haven't really opened the discussion yet. Uh, tomorrow is the day where um, we're going to spend a bit of time, I think, with various uh, governors from around the U US mm -hmm. um, who are uh, participating in the NGA here. Um, so we get, the great, we get a wonderful opportunity to uh, interact with them and talk to them. Um, but, you know, I think there has been um, history uh, and some of the history even in Australia wasn't great around infrastructure, but, um, you know, we over many, many years in Australia have developed um, uh, a process now um, whereby the government um, still has a degree of control over the build out of the infrastructure. Um, we as an investor, uh, we're quite an interesting beast, uh, QIC, because we're government owned, um, but we are also a large investor in infrastructure, not just in our home state of Queensland, but all around the world. Um, so, um, you know, I think the proper framework is the thing that's really required. Um, and as I said before, it's not gonna happen in isolation, one, you know, one layer mm. of government um, doing it, so.